I want to figure out how to best get at what you do, get at your views of the community, the philanthropic community, the community at large. You were raised here, you came back here, you raised a family here. I want to understand more about you from the standpoint of somebody who understands this community. I came here when I was eight. I think that qualifies me as being from here, but I run into people regularly who will say, oh, I thought you were from here. <laughs> and you think, well, if eight doesn't qualify me, what does exactly? But, um, you know, I'm somebody, I think the easy answer to that is probably, boy, there are a lot more cultural opportunities than there were then. The truth is, I was lucky enough to grow up in a family where my parents took us to a lot of the things that were available culturally. So. You know, I was always going to the symphony. I was going to um, things at the spring room as a kid. And I loved that part of this town. Um, I left here as an 18 year old, you know, vowing never to return as 18 year olds do, right? And I go do my own thing. I'd learned how to do some things. I'd lived in a bigger city. I had seen um, a level of racial integration that at that time really didn't exist in Columbus. Um, I had seen, um, I don't know, all the things that you see in a larger community. And coming back here, you know, we bought a house near Lake Bottom Park because to us that was the only real integrated place that we saw in this community where people socialized with people from different socioeconomic backgrounds, different racial backgrounds, and we thought, well, that's kind of an energy that we want to be part of. So that's where we bought a house when we moved back to town. Um, but also, I think you've seen this big shift in Columbus, and it's not just during the time that I was gone. It was going on earlier. I just hadn't realized it. People talk about it all the time, the shift from a mill economy to an information economy in our community. And part of that has to do with how decisions are made. Is it a top-down decision-making process or is it a bottom-up decision-making process? Um, the former takes less time, but arguably is less successful in the long run. And I love what I see happening now where people ask what I always refer to as the Columbus question. I'm in meetings all the time where we talk about how can we make something better in this community? And always, before the meeting will break up, somebody will ask the Columbus question, who else needs to be at the table? That, that's just fantastic. That's not something that you hear being talked about in other places around the country. I'm just convinced that Columbus has um, a mindset now that people are welcome to bring their ideas and their creativity when we think about how we solve problems and how we design solutions to opportunities. Maybe it's not always a problem. Yeah, and Whitewater's probably a great example of something that I didn't see coming. I mean, boy, when people started talking about that, um, I mean, I had a hard time imagining what that was gonna be like, and oh my goodness, I think it's gonna be transformative for this place. I remember, and I will tell you this story, back um, when I was in high school, Jim Jernigan was the mayor, junior, senior year, I'm trying to, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but he came and talked to the Brookstone Upper School, and you know, at that time we didn't even have an auditorium, we were sitting on the floor and he was talking to us. And I remember him talking to us about the idea of Columbus as a tourist destination. I remember him saying, we have these old houses that are historic houses that other people will come and look at. And we should really think about the river as being something that we play up more because it really is a pretty river. And I remember specifically he mentioned the, um, he said there's a lot of history in our town the jail that, you know, the Stockade Blues was written about that jail, and it's still in use, and we're not really using that. Chuck, I hope we were more polite to this guy than I remember us being, because we were just like, 
this there man this guy is on a different planet we can't wait to get out of here is it time for us to graduate yet good luck with your beautiful river we grew up being told that this was an ugly muddy river who's telling you that i don't know that that famous old collective wisdom right it makes you wonder what's in that water that we're drinking every day when you look at aflac and tesis and and Synovus and carmike and um, coca-cola these homegrown companies, Tom's Foods, um, that, that came up here and have really done great stuff. Coca-Cola, that's it's a little bit of a stretch it's though. Like, that's no. a little bit. Not when you look at the difference that the Coca-Cola company has made in our community. That's uh, amazing. When you talk about that, you're talking about the the Woodruffs, the Turners, the business reach, but also the fact of the philanthropic reach as well, right? The, the asset base that early investment in Coca-Cola has provided for this community. And, and absolutely, the philanthropy that has come out of that has been transformative. Um, I remember one time driving across the river and somebody in the car said, God, that river is so ugly. Look how muddy it is. So I thought, oh, okay, it's an ugly muddy river. Well, it's fascinating to think back to that conversation that the mayor had with us and how many of those things have come true. And I don't think he gets maybe the credit that he deserves for his vision. I don't know where it came from, but um, I really wish that I could sit down with him and say, look what we've done with some of those ideas. You. When you grew up here, you you were looking to get out. I mean, you're. I guess that's kind of what you said. I guess. I mean, you know, I, it wasn't that I hated Columbus. I just wanted to see what else was out there. Now you're a mom. Do you see that with your children? Do you, or do, has it changed the point that they want to be here? My kids want to be here. I think. I mean, I think we're still sort of deciding. I've got um, Becca, who's 25 and she is working at CB&T, loving it, loves being part of this town, loves being able to go downtown on Friday nights and hear great music. Um, my son is a rising senior at LaGrange College, um, majoring in music and business, and I don't really know what's ahead for him. I mean, he's, he's still in that stage where you're trying to figure out. But let's say they are really, really proud of this community and they love to tell people that they're from here. And it's not that I was ashamed of it. I just wanted to go somewhere else and do something different. Turns I, out I was able um, to do it. The Community Foundation operated, but very, very early on, really before anybody was hired, the board did the thing that I think has made all the difference in this organization, and that's raise an endowment to support our organization. So we have an endowed founder society fund that pays the bulk of our salaries, pays our overhead. It lets us um, serve the donors in our community, serve the nonprofits in our community, and then serve the community at large. We're not competing with other nonprofits. We meet with other nonprofits all the time and are able to say to them, tell us what your dreams are. What are your barriers for success? If, if you had you know, $10,000 tomorrow, what would you do with it? What would that look like for you? And they're not worried that we're gonna ask them for their donor list as they leave and go hit up those people to help sponsor the community. You, you don't compete against them, but there's only a limited amount of money to go to the nonprofits. You end up getting some of that, but you funnel it back to them, right? Is that what? Two things. Okay. One, we funnel it back to them, but also we help generate more. And to okay. me, that's the beauty of community foundations. Um, I did a report, and I'm going to have my numbers in front of me because I want to make sure that I get it right. Um, I met with a donor uh, last year and ran some numbers for them on their particular fund, and, it, and it's a pretty good example of how people use us. So this fund the family started to help them with their local grant making. They started it in 2002 with a gift of $250,000. Fun house to this organization. Exactly. They they named it, you know, the blank blank family fund, right? Okay. So it's here. It had $250,000 in it. 
Since 2002, it's made 182 grants that total $327,000. And they still have $60,000 in the fund. How many? 60,000 in the fund. For this particular family, they were not interested in building up an endowment for future generations. A lot of our families are. So they're not sticking to a spendable amount of 4.5% every year. They're giving away more than that. And they said from the beginning that was their objective. But because we're able to invest a large pool of money, it gets better returns, lower fees, more philanthropic money is being generated for the community. And that's at the core of what we do. So they didn't just give us two hundred fifty thousand and then give away two hundred fifty thousand dollars. They actually made it's more money. Well over four hundred thousand. Yeah. Since we started, so fifteen years ago, we've had gifts of one hundred and fifty-five million dollars come into the community foundation. We've made grants out of seventy-six million dollars, and we have. 79 million dollars left so community foundation math is that you start to actually generate money for a community by doing business here that i mean one of the threads i've been doing these interviews now for three months one of the threads that has run through many of these interviews from business leaders to any number of people is the philanthropic nature of this community What do you see when you see, I mean, how, how, how generous is Columbus? Is all I'm going to ask. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say it enormously generous. Now realize, I've never done this kind of work in other communities. But you talk to but those But I talk to these people all the time. And usually, when we're talking about that, I'm talking about them because they're calling me going, what in the world is going on down there? Um, when you look at a community that was able to successfully implement the Columbus Challenge, and raise over a hundred million dollars for arts and culture at the time that we did that, um, that you know, was, back in the 90s. That was insane. Um, demographics wouldn't have worn out that as a successful idea. Have you ever? Um, the idea that there can be an organization that lets people who love their community affect it for generations to come in a way that's easy for them to do it, effective, and that we're going to help them walk through all of the legalities of how you do grant making. We're going to let them involve their kids, their grandkids. We're going to take care of it after their grandkids are gone. Um, that's really exciting to me. And when you've got a town that's this generous and a populace that really gets the idea that we can do something larger if we work together. Um, it's really no surprise that this organization has grown as quickly as it has. So many challenges are ahead for us. We're going through strategic planning right now. We're really talking about what our community foundation is going to look like when it grows up. And part of that's going to be, okay, we're, we're kind of serving Columbus well, there's more we can do here, but there's a lot more we can do in the other parts of the Chattahoochee Valley. How do we get to that? Let's so. switch gears a little bit. Uh, you were talking about your mom. Both of your, parent, both of your parents are still here. Yeah. And uh, is, has that been a blessing now? Is they're getting, is they're getting older to be able to, to be in the same, pla is same place? Oh, there? it's been a blessing always. I mean, my, my parents are, um, my parents are great people, and I mean, I say that, that's, that'll sound horrible, but I'm so grateful that they are who they are. And um, you asked earlier what made me passionate. I think they really fostered my idea growing up that your job that you do all day every day should be more than your job. It should be your passion. You should look for something that um, is larger than just nine to five. So I grew up in a household where